Hi everyone, welcome to lecture three on theories on crowd behavior. Today we're going to be taking a look at emergent norm theory and this uh, you should notice that this is quite different from the theories that we've covered before. Okay, emergent norm theory is a theory that proposes that crowd action is rational and norm governed rather than irrational and pathological. Unlike Le Bon, um, they begin with a focus on collective behavior and social interaction rather than individual personality. According to this theory, crowd events are shaped by collective norms emerging in the situation itself. Okay, because crowd events occur in unusual contexts, contexts, there's a lot of uncertainty and confusion around what to do and uh, what forms of action you should be taking. So the main activity is to make sense of this confusion and the, uns and the unusual situation and norms on how to behave to redefine a situation are then needed. These norms emerge uh, when there are no social institutions or primary groups that can supply direction. So in other words, when no one's telling you what to do. And also when there's no appropriate guide for action. So because of the unusual context, no one knows uh, what, what they should be doing. The process of uh, emergence begins with differential expression. And this is a process whereby some individuals in the group, dominant personalities, express their feelings and thoughts, and bystanders and others do not do this. And this is followed by a stage called milling. Um, and during this milling process, people mill around and they interact with one another. And through this interaction, opinions are shared. Now through all these uh, sharings of sharing of opinions, there's going to be some differences. So the crowd's going to uh, most likely be ambivalent at this point. And the keynoters create unan unanimity. Okay. And obvious differences in opinion are resolved by dominant voices and definite actions are proposed. Um, more people and uh, more and more people become convinced of the key of the keynoter's proposal and other suggestions begin to be excluded as one course of action or one form of action is uh, decided upon. And so norms emerge through this process of interaction or this process of deliberation and these are the basis for this form of collective action. One of the strengths of this theory is that the crowds are not seen as irrational entities. They're not um, Sub, uh, sorry, they're not submerged. Their sense of identity has not been submerged. And there is a link between the self, uh, between the self and the actions in the crowd. The action is social, but it's not devoid of self. And there's a consideration of different phases, such as milling, uh, which leads a temporal aspect to crowd behavior. Um, often when we see crowds, uh, particularly on TV and particularly in footage of rioting, what we see is uh, the final result or the culmination, the climax of the event. And prior to this, there is often a, a period where people are just hanging out and talking and discussing. And it is these uh, aspects of crowd behavior that other theories often neglect. However, there are some problems uh, with this particular approach, and one is that it focuses on micro-social interactions. So it provides a very thorough account of relations between individual crowd members, but it doesn't give us any idea of the broader socio-political factors. So we don't know why the crowd members are acting like this, what is happening in the broader social sphere, the bigger picture. Um, it also doesn't really give us a, a, a good way to account for uh, rapid shifts in crowd behavior. And this is because of their focus on deliberation. So deliberation takes time. So how do these new norms and, uh, emerge quickly? How does crowd behavior change rapidly? Finally, while this is a social model, uh, the norms are still based in individuality. They emerge because of a uh, keynoter's rhetoric and, and are determined by the predisposition of dominant individuals in the group. So the norms are formed through group interactions, but they do stem from the individuals, from the keynoters, from the dominant personalities.